a post-oral incision is taken and a cortical mastectomy has started. At the floor can be seen a coronal septum which prevents us from looking into the antrum. The coronal septum is now opened and the antrum can be seen below. The coronal septum is opened completely and the entire antrum can be visualized. A posterior tympanotomy is started to gain access to the round window niche. The posterior tympanotomy is enlarged. Now the, uh, the round window niche can be seen below. The round window niche can be seen, but it is obscured by a bony overhang. This is removed to gain access to the round window membrane. The round window membrane can now be seen very clearly. A cochleostomy is created. This is to allow us to gain access to the cochlea. The insertional prosthetic device is inserted, as you can see, to determine if a normal electrode array can be inserted into the cochlea. The IPD can be seen going all the way up to the flanges at the round window membrane. This tells us in advance that a normal array of electrodes can be inserted. A groove is created to allow the cochlear implant to sit in it. The temporalis muscle is elevated to allow us to insert the cochlear implant below it. A bed is created to allow us to place the device. The bone is drilled, is drilled out carefully so as not to damage the dura below. The cochlear implant is inserted now, as it can be seen. This is a Sonata Opus 2 from Medel. The actual device is now inserted <coughs> into the, the cochlea all the way up to the marker ring that is over there. This needs to be done very gently so as not to damage the cochlear implant. Once it is inserted all the way up to the marker ring, it is coiled carefully in the mastoid and it is checked to see if the device is functioning properly. Once this is clear, then the incision is closed and hemostasis has achieved first and then we close it in layers. As you can see, the cochlear implant is, is coiled very carefully in the mastoid cavity.